Okay, let's talk about the ASVAB and specifically the math section of it. So if you're watching this video, I assume that you're interested or you're actively um, in the process of joining the U.S. military. So thank you for for that, for being one of those folks that, um, you know, steps up. Uh, my background, I'm a military veteran. I was enlisted in the United States Marine Corps. So many years ago I took the ASVAB and then later I served as a U.S. Navy officer, surface warfare officer. So I, um, you know, I understand a lot about the ASVAB and its consequences uh, from personal experience and then, you know, being a uh, an officer in the U.S. military. So it's a critical exam. And as you enter uh, the military uh, for what you're going for, your MOS and, and whatnot, this your scores are going to kind of follow you, you know, throughout your military career. OK, so if you just enlist, you know, it's like four years and that's it, then, well, your initial ASVAB is going to you know pretty much set the the requirement or set the um the path for whatever MOS or specialty you get into. However, many many times people you know have that attitude and they find out that they you know love the military and they want to reenlist or do something else or go to a particular school and they need you know higher ASVAB scores uh, in particular areas and then they you know they don't have that and then they may they have to maybe retake it or whatnot. So. You want to do the best you possibly can on the ASVAB um, the first time you're doing it. So math is a big component of it. You don't want to blow off the, ma the math portion of the ASVAB. And in general, you know, we're in a high tech military. You just want to increase your mathematical thinking. So with that being said, I want to do a little basic uh, math problem here with you that you should be able to handle, be able to comfortably do. Um, you know, uh, these are the kind of math skills you're going to want to have for the ASVAB, let's say that. Now, if you're struggling and you need, like, you know, a lot of help, you know, to prepare for the ASVAB, uh, especially the math section of it, I have a specific ASVAB math prep course, which is extremely comprehensive. I'll leave the link in the description of this video. My background is I'm a math teacher, teach from middle school to, to high school, college math. So I've been doing this for many, many years, and, of course, I have the military background as well. So you might want to check that out if you need like a real comprehensive uh, prep program. But with that being said, let's get into this problem here. So I got this crazy shape and you're like, okay, what is this? What do you want me to do? Well, I'm gonna tell you uh, right now, okay? So what I want you to do is find the distance around this figure, okay? So for example, you know, I want you to like, let's say you had to measure around this thing. So you would start here, go there, go here, here, and then over here. So I would want to get the complete measurement around this figure. You can think of it as the perimeter of the object, but then here we have a semicircle. So you have a triangle, okay, this is a triangle. Then we have a rectangle, and then this is a half circle, semicircle, okay? So with that being said, once you, if you think you know how to do it, maybe you should pause the video and, and give it a try. If um, And even if you don't know how to do it, maybe you should pause and just maybe think about what you may remember. Okay, so I'm going to go over this here, obviously, and uh, and you'll you'll learn a few things or maybe this is just to be a review. Okay, so let's go. Let's go to it. So if I want to find the distance around this figure, let's start. Let's start with the easy stuff. Okay. Let's go from here, here, and here. Let's get that distance. So this would be what? Six, and I don't have any units of measure, but you can think of this as six inches, six centimeters, whatever the case is, right? So we have six, let's put that here, six, plus, now what's this distance? Well, if this is a rectangle and this distance right here is three, then this distance over here is also three, okay? So remember, a rectangle, that's uh, um, the the these sides here are the are the same, and then these two opposite sides are the same. So this is going to be a three. Okay, so six plus three. Now I got to make my way away around this way. So that's going to be another six, right? So I have six plus three plus six. So that's what I have so far. Okay. Now we're going to get to the tricky part, right? So now I got to figure out this distance, this semicircle part and then this distance right here, okay, this part of the triangle. All right, so let's get to the semicircle. And this, I'm gonna give you the answer in the kind of estimation, 
Um, Cause really, I don't really care about the exact value here in terms of the answer. I, I'm, I'm really trying to teach you the mechanics of how we approach this. So this is a circle or a, ha a half a circle. So let's just do a quick review. So here, let's say I had a circle and its width is four. So you can see here, its width is four. We call that the diameter, okay? So if I told you to find the distance around this entire circle, that's called the circumference. So we find the circumference as uh, the formula for that is two pi r, two times pi times the radius, or the two times the radius is actually the diameter, the diameter times pi. Now pi happens to be a number that's approximately um, equal to 3.14, 3.14, and it goes on and on and on. I'm not going to get into uh, uh, more about pi, but most of you out there probably have seen this number or understand it, okay? So in this case, in this particular circle, if it's 4, I'm going to use this, to, 4 is my diameter, right? So the circumference is going to be equal to 4 pi, okay? Now if this is 3.14, that's going to be 4 times 3.14, so it's going to be a little over 12, okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave my um, the amount for this part of the circle as 4 pi, but this is the, this right here actually is not, the, and let me just kind of step back here, this is the distance around this entire circle, 4 pi. I only want to go halfway around it, so I need to take one half of that distance. So what's one half of uh, 4 pi? That would just be 2 pi. So this distance around here would just be 2 pi, or 2 times or 2 pi would be approximately equal to 2 times 3.14. You can do that on your calculator, right? So a little bit over 6. But we're going to express it as 2 pi. should be able to um, be comfortable leaving your answer with this pi. That's actually the correct kind of mathematical way of doing it. So we're almost there. Now we just have to get this triangle part. Let me scoot this over here. Okay, so now we have to figure out this green part. So if you, let's focus in on this triangle. I want you to notice, pay special attention to this. This is the clue to figure this, an, this out here. That is a right triangle. In other words, this is a 90 degree uh, triangle. Okay, we call that a right triangle because this corner angle is 90 degree and that's indicated by this little box here, okay? So the sides of it, let's kind of do this kind of break it out. I'm kind of sketching here and that's okay you can sketch. It says 3, 4 and what we want to know is what this side here is. Okay. Now this side actually technically is what we call the hypotenuse and we can figure this out with something called the Pythagorean Theorem. It's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. This is something you should know. Okay. And the way this works is this. a and b are the shorter sides of a triangle. This this side of a triangle, the, the hypotenuse, is always the longest side. We always refer to this as C, and then these two sides is, uh, of the triangle, the shorter sides are A or B, or B or A. It doesn't make a difference. Okay, so let's plug in, and we're gonna I'm gonna show you how to get this this C value here. So A, let's call this A, and let's call this B, and I want to know the distance of C. So Let's do it down here. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. Let me erase this. Okay, so A is 3, so that's going to be 3 squared plus B is 4, so that's 4 squared. And then C is what I don't know, so that's just going to be C squared. Okay, so it might look a little algebraic, you know, or intimidating. Don't worry about it. You definitely should have seen this is not that difficult. So 3 squared is 3 times 3. That's what that means, right? So that's 9 plus 4 squared is 4 times 4, which is 16, and that's equal to C squared. So 9 plus 16 is 25. So 25 is equal to C squared. So to get to C, to get to C, all I need to do is take the square root of both sides of this little equation. The square root of c squared is c, and the square root of 25 is 5. And that's it. So that's what c is equal to. So this is 5. So now I have my last little part of this uh, figure, okay, going around. So now I can just add things up. 
So let's see here, uh, 6 and 6 is 12. 12 plus 3 is 15, all right, plus another 5 over here. That would be equal to 20 plus my little 2 pi. And this would be my final answer, 20 plus 2 pi. So let me just double check myself. This is 9 and 6 is 15. Yes, that's correct. Plus 5, that's 20, plus this 2 pi. So this would be approximately the distance around that figure. So when you're working with different geometric figures, you need to know, you know, first of all, what does it mean? What's the word perimeter mean? What's the, how do you find the circumference of a circle? You know, basic things about triangles. These are kind of basic fundamental high school, um, you know, concepts. So, you know, you want to know math. Okay, you're like, well, why do I need to know math? Why does this account? Well, you know, listen, mathematics is in the U.S. military. We do a lot of math. My One of my tours, I was an, actually a navigator on a U.S. Navy warship. There is a lot of triangulation, angles, calculations. I mean, we used to um, do celestial navigation using the stars. It was quite a bit of math. So whatever your MOS is going, going for, you need to know, you need to be comfortable with math. So let's go and wrap this video up. And again, you know, if you're if you're looking to improve your math skills and you like my teaching style, then I welcome you to subscribe to my channel. I have again a real great ASVAB math prep course. I'll leave the link in the description of the video. I'm gonna check that out if you really want to, you know, kind of upgrade, really, really get your uh, skills maxed out for the ASVAB. It will really help you. Um, hey, if you like the video, definitely would appreciate it. Thumbs up and leave me some feedback let me know how your uh, military entrance processing is going in terms of are you taking ASVAB I believe there's another test out there as well that uh, recruiters use you all I mean you have to get ASVAB I believe there's another type of test out there so things have changed a lot since I've been in the service uh, which was many many years ago but, but believe me um, yes a lot of things have changed but a lot of things have also stayed the same so with that being said i want to thank you for your interest in serving our country we definitely need, need the best people out there the you know um and i'm sure i'm talking to an outstanding person so do yourself a favor do great on the asvab get into the mos or that program that you want and um you know uh i thank you for your time and have a great day